Shalom, shalom, brothers and sisters. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Trumpet's Call. I'm Maria. I pray that you are holding on to faith and holding on to hope during these times. Well, today we will be discussing our upcoming Daniel fast. After our last fast, our three-day Daniel fast, there was interest in, of course, doing another fast. And we all agreed, or at least many of us agreed, that we would do a seven day and then perhaps the next fast we could do 14 until we work our way up to 21 days or 30 days or even 40 days but let's not get ahead of ourselves so but for today we will be discussing the upcoming daniel corporate fast seven day daniel corporate fast so i'm going to replay a portion of information that i presented in another video on what is a daniel fast so i will be playing that information for you and then after that i will be giving the specifics of this particular seven day daniel fast that's coming up but we will be having it beginning on Sunday and I will be going over the dates and all of the information later on in this video. So if you have seen the information on the Daniel fast and you're well aware of all the information of what to eat, what not to eat, and you feel as if you want to skip through to the end to the information, feel free to do that. But for those of you who have not yet done a Daniel fast and aren't aware of it, the information that's following will be very useful to you. So I suggest you listen to it and take notes if you need to, so that you can make sure that you have everything you need in order to keep this fast in a way that's going to be beneficial and helpful and healthful and maybe even fun. You may enjoy cutting back on meat and dairy and fatty and fattening foods and just becoming more simplified in your eating for these period for this period of seven days. So we're gonna get into it today so you will be hearing me discuss an article by Dr. Axe on what is a Daniel fast. And then I will come back and discuss with you the specifics of the next upcoming seven day Daniel fast. We're going to be reading this article now from draxe.com on fasting. And it's a type of fasting called the Daniel fast. So we're going to be reading about some of the spiritual, emotional, and physical benefits of this type of fast. I want to introduce you to a secret healing therapy that can take your spiritual, physical, and emotional health to a whole new level. It's called the Daniel fast. And it includes many Bible foods that support healing. Fasting is a natural discipline that can bring supernatural results. I've seen fasting work when nothing else will. Moses, Elijah, Esther, Ezra, Job, David, Daniel, Peter, Paul, and even Yahusha fasted. What is a fast? Fasting is abstaining from something like food, drink, or entertainment for a period of time to create some type of benefit in body, mind, or spirit. There are many types of fasts, including a standard fast, water only, an absolute fast, no water or food, a partial fast to restrict certain foods and drink categories, or an intermittent fast, only eating during a small daily window, for example, 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. If you are looking for a healing breakthrough in body, mind, and spirit, then you should keep reading and find out how to do the Daniel fast. Okay, and I highly recommend intermittent fasting. It really is beneficial for the body because it gives the body an opportunity to have proper time to digest the food before you eat the next meal. And any extended period of time that you have not feeding the body, it gives the body a chance to clean house, to just take care of some things because it's not involved with the daily business of having to mess with digestion. It's, you're giving it a break. What is the Daniel fast? Many people wonder what Yahusha ate. Did he eat meat? The Daniel fast isn't based on what Yahusha ate, but is based upon what one of Yahusha's followers consumed and his follow and this and this follower was not surprisingly Daniel. The Daniel fast or a Daniel diet is based upon the prophet Daniel's dietary and spiritual experiences as recorded in the book of Daniel in the Bible. It's a type of partial fast that focuses very heavily on vegetables and other healthy 
whole foods, but leaves out any animal sources of protein. Many users of this biblically-based fasting method follow it for 21 consecutive days. Looking for Daniel Fast scripture readings? The Daniel Fast is specifically referenced in the Bible in two sections of the book of Daniel. Daniel 1.12 states, Please test your servants for 10 days and let them give us vegetables or pulses to eat and water to drink. In Daniel 10, 2 through 3, which says, In those days I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. I ate no pleasant food, no meat or wine came into my mouth, nor did I anoint myself at all till three whole weeks were fulfilled. You may be familiar with the Daniel Fast already if you've read The Maker's Diet Revolution by Jordan Rubin. The Daniel Fast only includes clean foods as described in Leviticus chapter 11. Unclean foods in the Bible include things like pork and shellfish. So, does the Bible say not to eat shrimp? Actually, it does. In Deuteronomy chapter 14 verse 10, which states, And what... Ever does not have fins and scales, you shall not eat it. It is unclean for you. Shrimp is a type of shellfish, and as such, it does not contain fins or scales. There are also some fish, such as swordfish and shark, that should also be avoided if you're following a biblical diet because these sea creatures do not have both fins and scales. Knowing clean and unclean animal proteins, according to the dietary laws in the Bible, is helpful to know. But while on the Daniel fast, you won't be consuming any protein from animal sources at all. The Daniel fast menu. According to our understanding of the Hebrew definition of pulse that was used in the verse for vegetables, can actually mean a range of foods. Here is the Daniel fast food list of what you are allowed to eat, a.k.a. your eating plan. Consider it a stricter version of a vegan diet, yet overall plant-based. Beverages. Water only. It must be purified, filtered, spring, or distilled water. It's best. Homemade almond milk, coconut water, coconut kefir, and vegetable juice. Vegetables should form the basis of the diet, fresh or cooked may be frozen and cooked, but not canned. Fruits. Consume them in moderation, one to three servings per day. Fresh and cooked. Ideally, low glycemic index fruits like stone fruits, you know, peaches, plums, or apples, berries, cherries, and citrus fruits. May be dried, but should not contain sulfites, added oils, and or sweeteners. Whole grains. Consume in moderation and ideally sprouted. Brown rice, oats, quinoa, millet, amaranth, buckwheat, barley, cooked in water. Beans and legumes in moderation. Dried and cooked in water. May be consumed from the can as long as there is no salt or other additives that contain only the ingredients that are legumes, beans, and or water. Nuts and seed. Sprouted are best. Raw, sprouted, or dry roasted with no salt added. Common foods. Here is a list of some common foods that you can consume on your own or include in Daniel Fast recipes. Okay, so on the screen, you'll see a plethora of vegetables like beets and broccolis and Brussels sprouts and corn and kale and leeks and lettuce and mushrooms and turnips and yams and zucchinis and rutabagas and all sorts of lovely goodness. It sounds delicious. And so these are the types of things that you would eat on a Daniel Fast. Fruits that you would eat on a Daniel fast include apples and apricots and avocados and bananas and blackberries and blueberries and figs and honeydew melons and nectarines and oranges and plums and papayas, watermelon, tangerines, just delicious, delicious, just good things that the Father creates for us to eat. Good things that are close to nature because there's life in them. There's life in these items. Also, legumes. Preferably organic, black beans, black-eyed peas, garbanzo beans, kidney beans, lentils, mung beans, pinto beans, and split peas. You can also eat nuts and seeds, preferably organic, almonds, cashews, chia seeds, flax seeds, pumpkin seeds, sesame seeds, 
sunflower seeds, and walnuts. Also a part of the Daniel Fast are whole grains, preferably organic, amaranth, barley, brown rice, millet, quinoa, or oats and groats. You can soak them and make a delicious breakfast porridge. Liquids like water, spring water, distilled or filtered water, vegetable juices, fresh pressed, coconut milk, coconut kefir, or almond milk. And I make a lovely and delicious oat milk kefir using oat milk. It's, it's like a fermented oat milk product, and it's delicious and really good for you, full of probiotics. And so as you're juicing, you can take a fruit or vegetable, drop it in your juicer, and voila, out comes a beautiful and delicious and nutritious juice for you to drink that's going to be really wonderful for your body during the fast. Foods to avoid. On the Daniel Fast, you should not consume any other foods or beverages other than those listed. Also, sea salt. Some use sea salt, some use Himalayan salt. So Himalayan salt or sea salt, those are great options if you decide to do this fast. Great options for you. You want to make sure that you're including some salt in your diet because the body needs salt. Okay, There are minerals, lots and lots of minerals in the Himalayan pink salt, so I recommend it. So you'd want to add some of that to your food. My recommendation is to only use a bit of sea salt when necessary in flavoring dishes, okay? And these are the types of food that you definitely want to refrain from eating. Iodized salt, meaning typical table salt, sweeteners, meat, including shellfish, dairy products, processed foods, breads, pastas, flours, crackers, unless you make them yourself from sprouted ancient grains. Also, cookies and other baked goods. Those are things to be avoided. Additionally, foods to avoid, juices, oils, and I'm not talking about fresh squeezed juice. I'm talking about juices like Tropicana that you buy at the grocery store that's full of sugar. Coffee, energy drinks, gum, mint candy. Those are to be avoided. And note, nutritional supplements also must be evaluated as to whether or not they fit with the criteria when engaging in this Daniel Fast. So the Daniel Fast. So everything that we have just described is listed on the pictograph on the screen. And so you see everything summarized here as to what you can eat and what you should not eat. And so it's a very useful thing to have if you decided to engage in this fast. Also in the screen we see on a reminder of the foods to avoid. And all of this can be found at draxcom slash nutrition slash Daniel Fast. In the Ruach of trying to place ourselves in a position so that we can be healthier, happier, and more in tune with the voice of the Father, I am once again proposing that we engage in a Daniel fast, this time for seven days. And so you have now been read exactly what it entails. You know what is to be eaten and what's not to be eaten. And you know that it's something that I'm wanting you to join in with me. And at the end of it, it is my hope that some of you will feel better, that you'll be able to see a difference in, the, in your energy levels, and you also, maybe you'll have dreams, maybe the most I will grant you vision. I'm asking you to come and engage in spiritual warfare with me with regard to what we put in our mouths. Let's take our, our forks and turn them toward foods that are clean and clean, meaning they're on the clean list and they're clean and good for our bodies. So I pray that that information was useful and or beneficial to you as we embark on this fast together. So I am inviting you to join me in this corporate Daniel fast that will last or commence for seven days. And we will begin at dawn on Sunday, December 11th, and end at dawn on Saturday, December 17th. That is the 11th through the 17th, okay? And so in this fast, as you heard in the video previously, we will be eating close to nature. You'll be eating nuts and seeds and berries and fruit, and you'll eat grains, but not a whole lot of grains, beans, you can have rice, just not too many of those things. You're trying to avoid heavy, heavy foods, but it's going to be a great thing for you to be able to 
turn your plate down, so to speak, in a way you're turning your plate down to certain types of foods, meats, uh, excess butters and cheeses and things of that nature, breads and pastas, and you're turning your plate up to foods that are lean, that produce in your body this healing that comes as a result of giving it good, clean food and lots of fresh water juices and smoothies and things of that nature herbal teas all of those things will be really good for your body and so this is what we're going to be doing for the next seven days okay so if you need to modify if you're on a special diet or on special medication or whatever it is that you have going on and you need to modify this this uh, fast at all please feel free to do so some people have opted to add fish in during this fast. So if you need to do that, feel free to add fish in if you need to. If you have to add meat in, perhaps you could just add it in for one meal and try to keep your meals as lean and light as possible. Okay. And be sure if you're on prescription medication to continue to take your prescription medication as your doctor has indicated. And if you feel that as if you need to, please consult your doctor before embarking on this Daniel fast. It's good for the body. However, if you feel comfortable consulting your doctor first, please feel free to do so. So during this fast, it's important that you hydrate, drink plenty of water, uh, herbal teas, juices, uh, probably diluted with water. You don't want to drink too many juices with straight up lots of fructose or sucrose. So dilute your juices if you're going to drink, especially store-bought juices. Uh, fresh juices are free to, you're free to drink, uh, but you may want to dilute that with some water too. But more than anything, we are praying. We are praying to the Father to honor the requests that we're going to be making to Him. And I've created a chart here. And on the chart, I have a seven-day prayer chart regarding the things that we're going to be praying for and also uh, verses of scripture that you could read on that day that reinforce the prayer that you'll be praying on that day and so on Sunday we'll be praying for repentance uh, praying prayers of repentance and we'll be reading Daniel 9 on Tuesday we'll be praying for healing a healing mind body soul our nation uh, the body whatever it is that you are in need of with regard to healing we're praying for a complete healing on monday and we'll be reading malachi chapter 4 and any other verses of scripture that you care to read that reinforce the idea of healing of our nation the healing of our bodies our minds our psyches our souls uh, so whatever you feel led to read uh, but i have malachi chapter 4 uh, listed there on Tuesday, we'll be praying for needs, meaning physical needs, spiritual needs as well, but mainly physical needs, things that you may have a need of in your family life, if you're in need of a job or a home or shelter in any way, a car, whatever it is that you have need of, uh, finances, we're praying on that day for the Father to meet our needs according to his riches in glory. And the verse associating there, or the chapter I should say, is Philippians chapter 4. And then on day 4, which is Wednesday, we'll be praying for marriages and families. For the Most High, we're asking the Most High to strengthen our marriages and to strengthen our families and to bring us together and knit us together in love and community and strengthen the bond of marriage and cause families to get along with one another and to love one another and look out for one another. And I'm talking about uh, individual nuclear families and as well as the family of Yashara, because we are family. So we'll be reading uh, Ephesians chapter 5 on that day. And as I said before, whatever verses of scripture that reinforce this idea of strong families and marriages, we're praying for that as we fast on Wednesday. And on Thursday, we'll be praying for our home gathering, our gathering home. We'll be asking the Father to hasten the time that he gathers us out of Babylon, out of Egypt, and back home to our homeland. And that day, Thursday, we'll be praying and reading Isaiah chapter 43 and any other of the many verses of scripture that speak of our gathering home. And on Friday, we will be praying for protection and power, protection from our enemies, protection from the things that are happening around the world for the whatever attacks may be coming, false flag or not. We're praying for the Father to cover Yasharao with his feathers and to keep Yasharao, every single member of Yasharao safe 
in his embrace. And we're also praying for the power of the Ruach to fall upon us and to strengthen us and equip us for the days ahead, to help us to endure until the end. In that day, we'll be reading Psalm 91. And on Saturday, we'll be ending our fast on this day, but on this day, we'll be reading Psalm 133, which is a beautiful chapter about unity. And the theme for Saturday's prayer is unity, unity, unity. We need unity within our nation. There are some who are our enemies who look at us and they point the finger and they stick out the lip and they mock us for the way that we pull each other down and how we don't have each other's backs sometimes and how we don't look up for one another sometimes. They mock us. They mock us. And we don't want that. We want our testimony before the world to be one of power, one of purpose, one of righteousness, and unity. May we come together and be unified under the banner of Mashiach and under the banner of our nation. So on that day on Saturday, we'll be breaking our fast, but we will be praying for unity and we'll be reading Psalm 133. So as I said before, you are free to read whatever verses of scripture you want to instead of these that I've listed or in addition to what I've listed. So during the time that we're fasting, we're focusing our attention on the Father. We're focusing our attention on going home and repentance and healing and having our needs met and protection and power and marriages and family and unity. These are the things that we're going to allow to fill our thoughts and our sights during this time. And so as you end your fast, we'll be easing out. You're not going to immediately go and have a burger. I don't recommend that. So as you break your fast, just continue to eat light. You may want to break your fast with some fish or something. You know, when you when you bring meat and dairy and cheeses and things like that, bring it back in slowly so that you don't upset your tummy in any way. Okay. I want you to feel free to screenshot any of the prayers that you see on the screen as I describe them to you. So these prayers are prayers that you can pray as you are fasting, and they are prayers of renunciation, they are prayers of spiritual warfare, they are prayers where you renounce any and all associations with things that could be uh, holding you back or being a hindrance in your life. As we have made many decisions and involved ourselves in many activities over the years, and some of them, they carry spiritual connections to the to darkness that we're not aware of. And so when you renounce the things that you've been involved in in the past, it gives you a clean slate. It, it allows the Ruach HaKodesh to come in and cut those soul ties and help you to be free. And I urge and encourage you, those of you who have grown up in Christianity, if you have are no longer part of the Christian church, and if you in your heart have renounced association with the Christian church, I encourage you to open your mouth and make that declaration. So I encourage you to make these renunciations and to pray these prayers. In addition to the prayers that you uh, come up with, that you pray on your own, and the Bible verses that we'll be praying and saying and reciting and reading during this time, we're going to take this time and focus our attention on the Father. We're going to focus our attention on repentance and praise oh yes during this time praise the most high let your praise game go up a little bit just engage in praise of the most high because he inhabits the praises of his saints and when we praise he draws near and we really really want him to draw near during this time we want him to draw so near that he bears us up on eagle's wings and brings us to himself that's what we want so during this time of fasting, let's ask him. Let's ask him to do that for us. Let's ask him to bring us home. Among the other things that we will be praying about during this time. So if you have any questions, I'm going to ask you to place it in the comment section of this video. And I will get to those things so that there will be no misunderstanding. Uh, once again, the fast will begin on Sunday. December 11th, okay? And there's we're in and we're beginning at dawn. No matter where you are in the world, 
the fast begins at dawn for all of us. So that may mean different things to different people, depending on where you are, but it begins at dawn. When you, when the Most High opens your eyes on Sunday, that is when your fast begin in the, in the AM hours. Okay. So if there are any questions, please feel free to drop them in the comment section and I will get to what uh, as I'm able. And I will place the link for the article by Dr. Axe in the description box. And I will also share in the description box, the prayers that I have so that those of you who weren't able to screenshot them, you can just copy and paste them. And once again, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I will place the chart, the prayer chart and the instructions and the verses of scripture. I will place that in the community tab. So you can have that as a reference. If you need to look at that, feel free to screenshot it uh, on your phone or what have you, so that you can have that as a reference to what we're praying for each day and the verses of scripture that we'll be reading together. And I think one of the most powerful aspects of this is that we're going to be doing it together. It's corporate. It's Yasharal. I'd like it if it were everybody within Yasharal. But for those of us who choose to participate, it's going to be us. And we're going to do this. And I pray and I ask you, invite others who may be interested in joining this seven day fast with us. And I think the timing of it is really good, as I know that Teo Ministries is planning at the end of the year a coming together and a corporate prayer. So this is a wonderful way to prepare ourselves for that time of prayer, the time of corporate prayer by having this corporate fast. So if you know anyone who'd be interested, even Teo, please share this video, share this video so that we can all come together as a corporate group of people, a family and fast together and pray together and get gathered together. Hallelujah. Hua. I pray that everything lands well with you and that you understand what we're doing here. And once again, please, if there are any questions, please ask. So please share the video if you feel led to do so. May the most high Baruch can keep you brothers and sisters. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and grant you shalom, peace and peace and more peace. And we are so excited that we get to come together and do this together and fast and pray and seek the Most High's face. And I wanted to mention, if there are any Gentiles out there who would love to join us in this fast, please, 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 please feel free to do so. You're welcome to join us in this fast as you pray and ask the Most High to gather us out of here. So if you're Gentile, please join in with us. Join in. You're welcome to do so. Until next time, shalom and shalom.